I just like things about copying. So now I'm starting. Yay, I hope you woke up a bit. So welcome to the first lecture of Share uh, after Bogdan, Baldan. I don't know what his name is anymore. Uh, I'm Peter. I'm Scandinavian, sort of. Uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit about my life, what I'm doing, why I've done it. Some of you might have seen this before. Some of you may have not have seen this before. Um, but as I said before, copying is kind of what I like, uh, and I've always considered myself you know, one of these people that just copy everything, information, and I want to share information to all of you. That's why I love share. Um, and basically, I realized when I was growing up, the internet became bigger, that this thing, copying, is apparently bad for some people. Uh, and we've been sued, and we've been doing a lot of these things, which is not very fun, because we like to copy. And I'm not really happy about that. So that's why we need to talk about positive things about copying. I was uh, one of the members of a Swedish group called Piratbyrån, which means the Bureau for Piracy. Uh, there was a bureau against piracy, so we wanted to have one which was pro-piracy. And it was kind of an art collective, hackers and artists and everything that talked about uh, file sharing, patents, and all of these different uh, things that you can do with the internet. And uh, we wanted to make people just understand that there are two sides of conflict, every, whatever conflict there is, especially when it comes about the internet. So uh, we started lots of different websites. We um, had demonstrations on different locations and so on. But we became very famous for our work with the Pirate Bay, which is probably why I'm here. And some of you might have seen me before. <laughs> Apparently. So um, one thing you are not allowed to do in, uh, if you're a Scandinavian is actually bragging. You're not allowed to say anything positive about yourself. Uh, so that's why I have slides to do that for me. So one of the big things with Pirate Bay, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how big it is and what it really is. Pirate Bay is a file sharing system for everyone. So it's totally open for the whole world. Whatever they want to share, they can share. Uh, and you do it by peer-to-peer. -peer. So you can send files to anyone, and they can send files back to you, and you can share this with lots of people. So we're not in interested in actually deciding. It's not centralized, which is kind of the most important thing about it. Uh, every second, there will be 150,000 computers, every single second. So during my sentence here, there will be like, you know, millions of computers that connect to each other and ask for other people to connect to and what, to kind, of, what kind of data to share. So that's every second. Uh, this technology is called BitTorrent, which I guess some of you know. Uh, and Pirate Bay is about 75% of all of the BitTorrent traffic in the world. And it's unfortunately becoming a bigger part of the BitTorrent community. It never stopped growing. Pirate Bay is still growing quite a lot. BitTorrent is about 80% of the internet. So with some sort of calculation, you understand that over half of the traffic in every cable of the internet in the world are users of our website. And it's all a big hobby site that we started just for fun. We never had really money for it. And uh, you know, internet goes down. Half of the internet vanishes when we do something wrong, uh, like tripping over cables when we're drunk or whatever, which has happened a couple of times. Uh, and, and this is a huge problem for the internet, because we have become one of the things we despise. We have become a centralized service which people trust and rely upon. We were not really famous for uh, the technology. We became famous for something totally different, uh, just the attitude we have. Uh, I don't know how many people have been on the Pirate Bay website. And the rest is lying, or what's? <laughs> have you gone to the legal section on Pirate Bay? 
Anyone? Gone to the legal section? One? Only like five people? Ah, uh, OK. All of them organizers at the event? OK. So on the legal section of Pirate Bay, you can go and read all of the legal threats that we have ever received. So if someone sends a letter to us saying you are doing something which is illegal, we will reply to that letter in a mean way. Very mean. We will tell people to go fuck themselves. We will tell people what kind of sticks they can put up their ass. Uh, we recommend a certain price range. Uh, we also tell most of these people, especially the ones from the US, that we are afraid of polar bears, not copyright. Because polar bears walk around all over in Scandinavia trying to kill people and so on. We just mess with them quite a lot. And they have no clue on what, if we are actually serious or not, which is kind of funny. We are also very clever people. And I can say we, because then I don't brag about myself. I just say we as a collective group. Uh, we got this uh, letter, which is my favorite. It's a contract from a company that said that people are allowed on Pirate Bay to file share uh, fonts that we own. So they sent a contract to us saying, we have to sign this letter, and, and so people are not allowed to share these fonts uh, at all using Pirate Bay. And uh, if we agree to pay you know, 25,000 euros or something like that, and we're not going to be sued and so on. So of course, we like to copy. So we kind of copy the whole letter, uh, reversed it, and used all of the fonts they complained about. <laughs> this is how you become famous. It's being an asshole, arrogant, a prick, something like that, and having a small sense of humor inside of it. Uh, this, the thing that happened with Pirate Bay is that um, we became big because of this and that every, every other site closed down. So we're not a good site. We're just the one that didn't close down. We're kind of these stupid people in, uh, maybe you've seen Monty Python, the knights, the same knee, you know? They lose their arms, their legs, and he still wants to fight. That's kind of us. But it's still funny. Um, a lot of people are listening to what we say. Maybe they didn't get all of it, but uh, some of it they got. Some people started a, a, a pirate party, maybe you've heard of them, which was kind of interesting. Uh, we didn't want to start them ourselves, but someone did, and now we have, like, the party has seats in the European Union Parliament, and they're getting bigger in every country in Europe. They're um, part of the Berlin com uh, city and all of that. It's very weird. They do politics. I only do normal parties. I don't like polit that type of parties. Um, other things we've done, um, we've tried buying a country. Anyone else tried buying a country? Yeah, one. That's good. It's fun. We raised $25,000 on the internet to buy a country. They wanted six billion. So when I was drunk, I gave away the money for rainforest in Brazil. It's also a way to do it. Um, we started a church, which is also kind of fun. Everyone, anyone part of a church? Maybe in this country, that's a hard question. Um, and we started, uh, we were called a cult by uh, one of the lawyers from Hollywood. And she's also the lawyer for the Scientology church. So we were thinking, hmm, maybe she's right. Maybe we're a cult, so let's start one. Maybe it's fun. Uh, and we found out that if you are dealing with religious communication on the internet in Europe, you can't be wiretapped. That would be illegal, because you're breaking people's freedom of religion. So for 50 euros, we made two uh, laws that has been passed in Europe. It has been, we've been fighting with them for like four years. And for 50 euros per year, we have a church, which means that no one can use these new wiretap laws. So we, we kind of mess with people in a funny way. Uh, but there is a reason why we've been having to do all of this. And now I'm going to be a bit more serious. I'm sorry. Uh, but we have this, you know, let's, let's talk about the music industry. Because this is a music festival as well, not only just this boring talks by me and other people. Um, the boring talk is by me. The other people are not boring. I'm sorry. Um, but let's go back 100 years. If you wanted music, you would have to listen to someone out on the street or someone playing you know, for money at the wedding and so on. That was kind of the music industry. And then something happened, and someone invented a way to record all of this music. And musicians were really angry. They were really upset. They said that we will not be able to make money anymore because people will record our music and then just buy it and never hire us. So they tried fighting this gramophone thing and was really upset about that. And in the end, they lost which was really good because it turned out that the gramophones and vinyl and all of these records were really good for the financial security of these same people because people bought the music and they listened to it so they wanted to hear more of it. 
Then came radio, and people said, well, this is really bad because people are now going to listen to radio and not buy our music records, and they're not going to you know, pay us to play anymore because they're just going to listen to radio. And they tried banning this. In the US, they're still trying to ban the radio. But it turned out that the radio was the best financial instrument ever for the music industry because you could hit, all of a sudden get more music out in, to people and people started buying records that they heard on the radio and then they hired the same musicians to come play at more concerts and so on. So the industry grew. Then came like this Walkman thing where you could record music on a cassette and the industry was really upset and said we have to ban this as well because you know people are going to record the music from the radio so they're not going to listen to radio more than once and then they're not going to buy the records and you, you know you, you see there there's a pattern here uh, so they were really really upset about this and they lost the fight again and invented something called the CD being Scandinavian I uh, unfortunately have some sort of responsibility for ABBA uh, Officially, I want to apologize to most of the world for this. Uh, I have nothing to do with it besides being born nearby one of the people, so that kind of sucks. But the CD was good anyhow, because it made music digital, which has never really been before. All of the music became like on this small disc, which was very accessible for people. The music industry was happy, because it was really hard to copy this until someone invented MP3s. Uh, and then with MP3s and the internet, we have something which they were not really happy about, which I call weapons of mass distribution, because I like to play with words. And this kind of changed the music industry to a position they'd never been into before. So we no longer talk about the music industry only. We talk about the record industry, which is part of a dying, it's a dying thing within the music industry, because we've evolved past this. I've always been working a lot with these uh, subjects when it comes to you know, how to behave with new technology. And one of the things that I started because of all of these fights we've been having with over copyright and, and file sharing and all of that is uh, Flatter, which is one of many things that you can do instead of just buying music normally. You can use new services that invent new ways of, of paying for, for culture. So Flatter is kind of a, a like button with money on top of it. And Every time I do something, apparently it has to be something really weird, because uh, we noticed that when I started doing something that had to do with money, the, there was a problem within the money industry that we had to solve. So WikiLeaks could only receive money on, on Flatter on the whole internet for a while, because people wanted to sue and centralize the money and, and so on. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's not very interesting. The only interesting thing with Flatter is that you can use it and make money from it, uh, and you should check it out. I don't know what I'm talking about, sorry. Um, but there's this thing. We need to think differently about value of culture and value of sharing. Because when we have access to all of the information in the world, which we have right now, we have a new problem, which is not the problem of how much to pay for it. It's what kind of value is value. Is it value in money? Is it value to each individual? Is it value of society? What really is it? And this is becoming more and more apparent, because we are used to talking about music and texts and movies when we talk about digital things. But digital things are also becoming physical things. So when we talk about copyright and patents and you know, trademarks and all of these things which people always infringe on, because it al it's always infringing on our own uh, civil rights, uh, I always talk about the 3D printers. Have anyone seen a 3D printer? A couple of people. They're available, on, I think, on the top floor. There's going to be like demos, and you can go there and see them. It's actually things you, you can download things, physical things from the internet, and print them on your own printer, physical objects. Uh, I bought a new computer the other day, and it had no uh, chassis at all. So I downloaded one and printed it, a plastic chassis for my computer. And this is going to be something which is going to change the world of physical objects, just the way as uh, internet changed the world of, of digital or music and so on. A friend of mine downloaded a pair of shoes, for instance. So instead of buying shoes, which has been created by children in uh, Vietnam, whatever, he could just download them from the internet. But it would be a bad thing because he can get sued over it. There's also people downloading instruments and playing illegal music, which is kind of funny. But this, uh, this will become a, a bigger problem, because right now we're fighting in these copyright industries, and soon we're going to fight these people that have factories. But the biggest thing that we have that we're fighting are idiots that don't understand the internet, like these people. 
which on the same day uttered the same words, we need to shut down the internet. One wanted to shut down because people were robbing things in, uh, in London, the other one wanted to shut it down so he could control people. But the problem is that internet has become such an important tool that everyone wants to shut this down uh, for different reasons, and we should not allow them to do that. And there is this famous person that I don't like very much called Mark Getty, which owns a company uh, that owns a lot of pictures. So if you see a picture in a newspaper, chances are he owns 80% of these pictures. He sells pictures that other people sell to him uh, and owns the, the copyright for them. And he uttered the word that copyright has become the oil of the 21st century because it's no longer about controlling oil or like minerals, it's about controlling information. Uh, I don't think copyright is the information itself. I think the information, whatever information it is, is become our new currency. Uh, and we're kind of stupid because of this. So if I create something, I will put it on the internet because we all know that it's great to put it on the internet for free, give it to other people, share it, remix it, so on. But someone actually usually owns this information. It would be Google, it would be a Apple or Amazon, one of these companies that you actually give your information to for free. And this information is more valuable than any other thing ever in history. And that's become really a big problem. So instead of like, looking at what we actually want to achieve with the internet, we have just started giving up to these big corporations, uh, and especially into Facebook. Uh, I met this kid in Sweden, and he, I asked him, what do you do, like, what do you use your computer for? And he said, I use it for Facebook, the internet, and Twitter. I'm like, what? what? You know, it, it's become something which is not very good. Uh, so we need to look at what we are doing ourselves because we are now hurting our own culture. By centralizing all of this information, instead of having them on our own machines or on networks that allow them us to do peer-to-peer -peer communication, we are allowing governments to go in and censor these different sites, which is happening all the time for different reasons. Uh, and copyright and is also part of the censorship thing. And I think you have it much worse in this country than I have in, in the countries I live in. Uh, but for instance, when we were talking about uh, SOPA and PIPA and ACTA and all of these uh, new laws coming out, there was uh, one of the most important bloggers in the US that wrote a really critical post about this. And one of the people that were uh, for these new laws filed a censor, like, a, a uh, cease and desist letter to Google saying you cannot let people find this website on Google because he's breaking our copyright. And he was actually taken down from Google's index. So no, he, he kind of vanished from the internet if you didn't follow his blog, which is a big problem because it's limiting freedom of speech as well. So I think that we are using the internet wrong. We're doing everything wrong nowadays. I'm, I'm really upset about this. Uh, so instead of having this decentralized world where we are, have our own servers, where we have local services like a local Facebook for our different countries, all of these things, or understanding that we can't just agree to Facebook terms, uh, we need to start using the internet as it was built to, um, to be used, totally decentralized and distributed. And you must also remember that when you give away your data to someone else, it has been copied, it has been downloaded. Someone else has a copy of this. You cannot erase it. Um, and this can be really bad for you. And I'm, I'm going to end this with a picture of some of my friends who knows how bad it is when you can't erase pictures of yourself. Um, two of these people now run companies which they are CEOs of. Uh, and this picture always shows up. And it's not very bad, but it could be much worse. But they can't control anything anymore. Uh, and maybe they could if they understood how we should use the internet. So thank you.